on this episode, it's time for Q&A, and I would call this a fun, but also high-quality Q&A, John. Yeah, I, I think there was some great questions. Like always with the Q&A, the, the questions are all over the board. So I think that brings everybody into the show. There's a l- little bit of... Uh, a little bit of something for for everybody, but yeah, there's yeah, some, literally there's some dinosaurs <laughs> on this show, and there's some fucking more people with fit in, or fitness in their Instagram. John being inappropriate with Instagram. old employees. Listen, I was not being inappropriate. I was just sexually assaulted. I mean, I, I, <laughs> you were I, sexually assaulted. I could press charges, but but <laughs> that's true. I've decided not to because I worked through that pain that I got. <laughs> Find what pain John worked through. I worked through all the the pain. It was good good pain, actually. My eyes are closed. I'm thinking about it. Let's go to the show. Let's go. What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Business and Biceps. And you better wake your ass up. Because on today's show, we're going back to Q&A. And I got to tell you. I'm a little bit jealous because John never knows what the questions are. So he can be like, you know, just kind of caught off guard. So I wanted to feel the same way today. I didn't want to be as prepared. Trey, is he being a faker? Trey, is he being a faker? Does he know the questions? Not well, they come from my channel. (laughs) So I I just, but what I did was I just, you know, when they come in on Instagram, they kind of come one over top of each other. I just screenshotted them and threw them in and didn't read through them. Normally I sift through and go, Oh, John will blaze this motherfucker yeah. right here with this well, this dumb question, or you know what I'm saying? Like, you're trying to be productive uh, adults here. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're trying to be. So, John, what's I know that you've been changing your screen name for people that watch it live. Absolutely. And today happens to say Michael Corleone. Yes, I think it's necessary, and I'll tell you why. Please, um, please, yeah, please yeah. tell me why. So, so a lot of people <laughs> under the age of 25 uh, have never seen The Godfather. And to me, that's a fucking problem. If you've never seen the Godfather, that's borderline blasphemy, right? (laughs) So (laughs) if you're Italian, it definitely is. (laughs) Well, if you're anybody, it it is. And uh, Miguel Corleone um, from Corleone, Sicily, was one of the greatest characters and one of the greatest thinkers and leaders in a movie. So I am taking, I I am personifying him today. That's why you see that on the screen. Okay. (laughs) Look just like him, Fosco. Not really. (laughs) (laughs) Talk about Marlon Brando, just a beast in that role, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. Marlon. So, so I'm actually, Michael is Pacino. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. But Marlon Brando's, uh, I mean, that's like a, that's like a epic, timeless role. You could argue that that's one of the best roles of this century, literally. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was going Don yeah. Corleone, not Michael Corleone. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So listen, listen. If you have not seen The Godfather, take your fucking ADD video game playing ass <laughs> and hit fucking hit pause, <laughs> hit pause <laughs> on your online sh- cheesy screen name and sit down for fucking three hours and do yourself a favor. Watch a masterpiece. You might there learn it something. is. You might learn Undo. something. You fucking degenerates. Let's go. All right. Question number one. <laughs> G, do you think Fosco will ever change his handle to Fit Fosco Fitness? <laughs> is- I'm, I'm not. I, I don't. I'm, I, I can't grace that with an answer. I, I, I'm not. Listen, he's trying to poke. He's trying to poke. And it's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? You're going to, you'll get help from me. Hey, we're starting uh, right, right? This is know. the way to start it right here, boy. Here, here. I'm, you get a one word answer, sir. No, no. That's I, I'm going to actually, sir. I'm going to give an answer to that. I, okay. I think that it's, we, it, it is, it feels a little weird that anyone can put it in their handle and then it makes everybody feel like they're the same, right? So there's no hierarchy when everyone can just put fitness in, but it's like also if you're involved in the industry and you want to showcase that, then how do you showcase it? So it goes back and forth. I didn't want well, fitness to be in, time out, time out. Let, let, I didn't let, want let, fitness to be let, in mind. Let's actually, think about that. Let's think <laughs> about that because then we can make that argument mm-hmm. to For every anything. industry. That's true. But That's true, why? John. Why it is it is it fitness? And, and and I'll say this, and this is not, and, and this has nothing to do with you. So don't take it personally. I won't Fit, take it personally. Yeah, yeah. Fitness, fitness by nature. 
um, especially the industry of it, is, nar is narcissism, right? You, you want to look no good, you want people to look at you. So the reason I believe you see fitness in people's Instagram uh, names or fucking tags, whatever you want, fuck you want to call it, is because they want people to look at them and say, wow, they're fit, they're or insane. wow, they can teach me something, or wow. But then there's, you know, uh, CEOs and great thinkers and authors and all this shit that don't put like, you know, fucking David Goggins, motivator and author. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> David like, Goggins, motivation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's an accurate it's point. It's cheesy. Yeah. So all yeah. you fitness people out there, you're cheesy as fuck, dude. And and there's like 5,000 of you in oh, every, everyone's town. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wish that it didn't feel know. as cheesy when I did it five years ago. <laughs> Yeah. It, I swear, I swear it didn't feel as cheesy then, Johnny. Yeah. All right. Uh next. Oh, uh at AD Britain wants to know thoughts on the gym still being closed. Do you think they should still be closed, John? So so that that to me it's a twofold question because mm -hmm. I have not heard clear directives from the federal government on holding businesses harmless if yeah. it can be proven, if we even want to go that far, that someone got the coronavirus from being in your environment. So number one, as an owner, um, I'm has if I'm owning a gym, right? I'm hesitant to open because if I don't have clarity on that, obviously we know germs run rampant in gyms. So, so gyms not being open, I understand if I might get sued. From a personal standpoint, um, listen, we talked about this on the, on the other episode. If you want to go in and subject yourself to other people, germs and all that stuff, um, I think you should have the right, but you should also have to sign a liability waiver that you will hold everybody and everything and the gym and the business and just everything harmless, period. John, if your gym's open tomorrow, are you going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew that answer. <laughs> so, yeah. and that's, and so that's where, right? Even if like in the back of your mind, you think, man, this really probably shouldn't be happening yet, but it, oh, but the overpowering want to be there will make you be there. That's the way that I think. And yeah. I, I can't tell you, I will, I'm going to be, I'm going to want to open my gym and be there, but I don't know that it's really the right thing to do. Yeah, that's, man. That's I, I, I think kinda, that varies from person to person. Yeah. The right thing, you know, I, I, I hear it and call me uh, stupid, but I, I, I don't believe. I'm just not afraid of this fucking virus. Yeah. I personally am not afraid that if I got it, it would wreak havoc on me. Sure, knock on wood, it could kill me. Of course it could. Um, but uh, so many other things in this, I, I, I refuse to live that way. Um, yeah. There's things I can do to protect myself and I'm choosing uh, not to live that way. So, yeah. it, But, but well, I respect someone else's choice if they, if they choose to live uh, differently. For sure. Well, yeah. And even though I think that way, if I can open my gym, I'm going to open it and be there. It's it, it just, it, there's no way I'm going to not be able to go. I mean, I, I don't even how to, uh, I don't even know how to do that. So, all yeah. right. Next is going to be at Peter dinosaur eight, Peter dinosaur. Name. Hey, Peter, how, <laughs> how old are you? Are you eight? Is that why you put eight at the end of your name? Peter dinosaur. Hopefully you're an archeologist and I just sounded like a dickhead, but continue. yeah, yeah. This guy like yeah. found the T-Rex yeah. yeah, and you're exactly. being a hater. <laughs> I'm being a hater. I'm sorry, Peter. Much love. dude. Uh, Peter dinosaur eight. Um, or he's a huge he, pervert or he's a pervert, right? I wonder if, if he follows the, guys out there that put yeah. like dinosaur. Stop it. Just stop it, Peter. All right. Inve investment saving strategies for someone who is 12 months away from buying their first house. Okay. I, I would say, um, don't put, I would say put as little down as you can, yep. uh, and focus on the interest rate when buying your house, because that's, that's what really matters. Different, uh, climates, uh, yield different interest rates. We're in a great period right now of extremely low rates. So now if you do have a fine, if you have a good job and you have a financial backbone, now is a good time from a rate standpoint. It may not be the best time from a property value dipping in the next six months standpoint, but I'm sure. not going to, I'm not going to uh, go there. So if he's talking about investing, I mean, it sounds like you're making a pretty fucking big investment right now, buying your buying your first home. So um, it, I like the way you're thinking, though, because if you're thinking like, OK, and I don't know he's thinking this, I'm going to assume I, I can put, you know, let's say as opposed to putting 40 grand down, as opposed to putting 40,000 down, I'm going to put 10,000 down. 
what should I do with that other 30,000? You yep. know, I, I, I think right now you look at companies and there's a lot of them still that got beat up and they're still beat up for no reason, for yeah. no, for no good reason. Listen, we all, we all, we all could talk about the airlines and the cruise ships and, and, and retail, and it's a waiting game. We don't know how they're going to come back. And obviously those stocks, oil stocks, all, all, all this stuff. But there are some very, very good companies that just got throttled just because the market got throttled and they're still yep. down 30, 40%. So I would, I would focus um, on a mix of equities. Yeah, I like that, John. Um, I, th I think I don't remember understanding how important, you know, I, I bought my first house pretty young, but credit rating is so important too. And I don't oh, know absolutely. that, right, Johnny, I don't know a lot of people that maybe this, it depends on how young he is, but like maybe this early in the process, they get to, let's say the lender and they're going through the process and they realize they have some doctor's bill that was $70 that they never paid, but is reflected on their credit. Things like that happen to a lot of people because they don't happen pay to attention me. to it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And I thought I remember you mentioned something like yep. that. Yep. And so basically it's like you have the money, you've got a job or multiple businesses, but you got this thing that tanked your credit by 30 points just because you weren't paying attention to it. And then what that does, it fucks up the opportunity to get a good rate for a long period of time. So if you have 12 months, I would make sure that you've fine tooth combed, went through that, see other things that you can do to maybe reflect even a better credit rating over that 12 months, get yourself pre-approved, look at, like John said, if you're, if you're putting some money down, see what's the opportunity at the, what is a Fannie Mae, FHA, whatever. Some of them can do 0% to 3%. Look at all, understand all of that. I, I can honestly say, I think I was so busy building, you know, my personal training business back then when I went to the lender and I, I hadn't, re I really just didn't do my homework on that stuff. I didn't know what credit rating I needed to have. I didn't know how much down, like I, I was really, you know, I really hadn't, I mean, you have to start the process somewhere, but I would have done now going back, I should have done way more research to understand where I needed to set myself up as a young professional walking in, you know, Ray's about to, you know, get pregnant or whatever. And like, I'm trying to start this family, but I just didn't know all that stuff. And there's so yeah. many resources. You should know those things. I think I, th I you know, just <clears throat> going off that before, before we end it, the best thing for a young person who isn't sure about credit and all that stuff is to go to your bank, uh, that you hold a checking account with and get a credit card with a $500 limit, a $1,000 limit. Yeah. And start, and, and here, here it, it's this easy guys. Just make your payments <clears throat> on time. Just make your payments on time. That's it. That's it. And we've talked about this before. Your credit will get dinged more if you pay off your balance in full. And that, and yeah. how stupid this is because banks, and creditors want to see how you can manage debt and managing debt would be, I have a $300 balance. I paid 150 towards it. They want to see how you can carry it. And the most important thing is get a low limit credit card, make those payments on time, and that will push your credit up. Yeah. Just use it as a, as like an actual tool to make it better. Exactly. Exa I wish, I wish I would have known <clears throat> that. I would, yeah. I, I didn't know that when I was younger. Isn't that weird, John? Like we were focused on, you know, building businesses at young ages and all these things. And this is something that, you know, we could essentially maybe be ahead financially, but be behind from a credit standpoint because we don't 100%. operate in it because we don't operate in a normal system. I know you figured that I, I had the same thing happen to me. No, but I think about it like this, right? So what's mm -hmm. more important? So, so I was chasing, so I had like, I had cash young, right? I had a decent amount of cash young, not a ton, but a decent amount, but, but I didn't understand, uh, credit. So what's more important if you want to go and make a mark, let's say, in investing in real estate, in the stock market, credit rating or cash? Credit rating is because credit rating is, is making liquidity and, and cash available to you. So if you have a good credit rating, you could go get $200,000 and you could go buy three properties. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't do that if I just was a 21-year-old kid with... 25,000 in cash because my credit's not high enough. So no one's going to lend me the money. So you can make an argument that buying power and higher credit, if you're an aggressive investor and you have that kind of brain is more important than cash on hand when you're young. Yeah. What a valuable topic. I don't think we've ever talked about this really, or it's yeah. been a really long time, right, John? Yeah. yeah <clears throat> absolutely. Okay. Uh, from at Scott Robach, it is 
what has been your biggest motivation to keep that dog mentality like that that i'm gonna eat it all go get it yeah i i i don't i don't need uh motivation um i i, I think that's part of uh, my my genetic code um i'll just i'll just make any situation a competition and I don't, I don't, I don't need motivation or maybe, maybe that is my motivation. I was just, I, I think it's not motivation. The words competition for you, Johnny. Yeah. And, and, and <clears throat> anybody anywhere, whether you're in a classroom, whether you're in an office, whether you own a business, you, you could figure out what your competition is. If you actually think about it within three seconds and it should fucking piss you the fuck off that someone is doing what you're doing better than you. Like, why should somebody be better than you at what you're dedicating your time to? I can't accept, I cannot accept the idea of that. Now, are there people in this world that are better than me? Yes, but it, it's, I still can't accept the idea of it. Hence, <laughs> it pushes me. You know what I'm saying? That's like, amazing. I, I can't accept that. I, I, I refuse to accept the idea. That's like a great inside look at how you tick right there, Johnny. Yeah. But the fact that like you can, um, if you're in a situation and somebody's in your mind, essentially beating you, that then takes your, like, whether it's hours you'll put in or hours of research or out, whatever to an entirely different level. Dude, put it, put, put it this way. I, I would <clears throat> way rather, way rather, uh, have competitors that are in close proximity, go out of business, watch them lock their doors and I'll sound, I sound ruthless, but you know, <laughs> everybody, everybody loses their job, all this stuff. I would way rather see that than have someone send me a check for a quarter of a million dollars. You'd rather see like and win. I'd rather see them have to board the fuck up and, and, and know that the worst thing they could have done was compete with, you know, something I'm involved with. You sound like fucking uh, what like Rockefeller used to say, bro. That's like some shit like from the old days. That's how them dudes were. They tried to put each other out of business. Remember? Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just what it is. Um, I like it. So really, if you think about it, John, you never really think I need to be motivated. You're thinking, okay, where's the competition at? A absolutely. And if that changes, yeah. I need to change what That's I cool. do. Well, no, I think that's cool because I think that's the first time we've talked about ex, what is it, extrinsic, extrinsic motivation, which a lot of people go get. It's watching things, it's watching these type of things, it's you know certain quotes or whatever, and you, that's not really what moves you. So what re really moves you is the fucking competition, which is, I mean, Absolutely. you know, and people can manufacture that or it can be real. Either way, you can create it so it keeps you more motivated. Yeah, there's always somebody if you're in business that if they were not there, you would be getting more. True. So yeah, I, I like I it. Throw them out of the way. Uh, for me, I think it's really just leaning on why I do this in the first place. Um, my motivation really comes from the body of work that I've always wanted to accomplish, what I wanted to create, um, who I wanted to uh, uh, you know eventually be within the industry or provide um, and teach. And I just think like my body of work you know, was going to be a lifelong pursuit. So, you know, I'm maybe more or less motivated from day to day, but I think there's a baseline of motivation that's always been at a certain height. And that if I, I try my best to be at that baseline, even when I'm not feeling it, sometimes it's going to dip lower and sometimes it's going to go a little bit higher, but having like super high and lows, I try my best not to have, I try to have a baseline of um motivation from a standpoint of like productivity that i can come with but that that's kind of how i how i operate on a regular basis um yeah. all right next next question uh k86 get fit <laughs> uh, wants to know thoughts on two days during quarantine have you done two days during the quarantine at all john i have uh not <laughs> consistently but i listen i think it's i think it's great you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's time. <laughs> Everyone got time. <laughs> time, and it's it's a steward to your mental health. So, uh, working out twice a day, if you, if your body's being supported with the proper nutrition, and you're not overtraining, and you're not like hurting yourself, I th I think that's great. I think it also gives you something uh, to look forward to twice a day. And and yes. uh, quarantine time is is challenging, 
And if you can do twice a day and it, your body's up to it, fucking more power to you. And even if the second time of day is like walking down, like I see some of the pictures from the guys down in South Carolina, like you guys can walk down by Folly Beach. You guys can be out and moving like that essentially could be the second, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be some crazy amount. It can be literally like some type of exercise like that, walking, biking, going out just, you know, just because you have more time than you would in normal circumstances. Right, right. And so what I did on purpose was a lot, sometimes I still do everything in the morning, but I would normally be at practices with my kids at night. So I, I don't have the ability to train usually in the evening. So it's like, what I would do is usually lift weights and then lunge at night just because I'm not, you know, running kids to practices currently. So once again, so I would look forward to it. I don't really like separating like that, but I did it because I got to nighttime and I'm like, what am I going to watch? Like, can only like do so much stuff for work and I'm, I can only watch so much lost. Like I need something else to look forward to. So I'll do an extra arm workout or I'll lunge or I'll do something. And so I split them apart kind of on purpose really because that exact fact, John, just because you want something else to look forward to that you like to do. Absolutely. Corey, you need to watch Vikings. You, you I know will, I do need to watch Vikings. You, you, you're you right. appreciate Ragnar. You as a, as, as, as a character, as a, as a human being, you appreciate it. Okay. You. All right. Uh, at Marty headlines. That's Marty headlines. It sounds, the dinosaur, like, a, the it sounds like leisure one, suit Larry or something like pretty good. Uh, Marty headlines. Okay. He wants to know what purple drink Fosco spilled on the podcast last week when I was listening. So he must not watch us live, but he uh, heard what happened to you. <laughs> it was a purple drink. It was a purple drink. Uh, listen, I don't drink any uh, like soda anything like that but i've been getting into because i i don't hydrate myself as much as i should um pretty much amino recovery three times a day and outside of that i i drink uh monster energy and and max effort energy so like i'm not as hydrated as i should be so this drink by bai there's like one gram of sugar in it um and it's like blueberry I don't know if it, you call it water or juice because there's a, no sugar in it, but mm -hmm. it, yeah, a blueberry buy and it, it tastes fantastic. Nice. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that was, was that nice. was funny though. Whenever that was happening in real time, it got all over <laughs> my, my, my crotch. It looked like I peed my pants. Um, yeah. It, it, look, it looked like I, I entered a, a wet pants contest or something, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> winner, winner. All right. Yeah. Uh, at Nate, the great 39 wants to know, and I, I think, after I say this question, I know there's some ones we've told before, but it might be fun to bring one or two back. What is the funniest moments at the gym that you that has ever happened? <laughs> I know you got either one from the archives or one I you know, haven't told, John. I'm just trying to think of ones that, you know, are kind of appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the one about the guy who walked around naked. You told that one. I remember the guy where you almost killed him. That one was pretty funny. <laughs> um, okay. Well, okay. So, man, there's so there's so many. and Especially because you were at a public gym, too. So, you know, you saw a lot of, them of are inappropriate. Clowns. I'm just trying to think of what I should. Um, I think, uh, okay. So, um, used to work out with these guys who I, you know, did learn a lot from. And they were all like bodybuilders who competed on on a, on a high level and um you know prior to their workouts they would uh they would inject a lot of fucking steroids and as someone who's it's like a daily thing every workout yeah every <laughs> workout and That's so here, 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 here's here's the crazy part so number one before we get into the injection process yeah they they would also all take viagra right before the workout Shut the fuck what listen listen <laughs> this is a this is a very popular thing amongst bodybuilders because think about it what viagra does is it makes your hump uh, your heart pump out severe amounts of blood so your pumps are, are in insane fucking, so it's not just your dick it's at your pumps are fucking insane so they would they would all take viagra which is amazing um and then <laughs> after after that they would go in the tanning rooms and they would spot shoot so because they were, the fuck? oh, okay, 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 good. So like if they're work, dude, okay, so this one dude, he was spot shooting. Dude, it was like, okay, so a bottle of fucking steroids is like typically uh, 10 cc's or 20 cc's. He took half the bottle. I don't know if it was 10 cc's or 20 cc's. Half the bottle and he put it, bro, 
in the inside because because he was working biceps the inside the soft tissue the big ass motherfucking needle into the middle of his bicep okay on the front side not the, not not the back side and um the dude who was shooting him up was like dude are, are, are you sure you want this because that is not a safe place to inject you know what i'm saying most guys go in their ass or their shoulder and I'll, he's like yeah yeah and you see the fucking pain on his face and i'm watching it because i'm just all of this fast I, I like to learn about stuff even you know if i'm i'm not into it so uh, it's fascinating to me and he's like yeah yeah i'm good i'm good and and the dude pulls out the needle and i swear to god like your heart pumps blood blood shot about eight feet and it hit the wall in the tent dude dude like like <laughs> like a heartbeat like a I'm heartbeat sure. boom Jeez. boom boom and someone i was like grab a fucking towel dude like it was it was i don't know if it was the most blood i've ever seen but it was it was crazy it was shooting across so yeah these dudes are fucking serious they're, they're about it you know so hold on let, let me ask a couple follow-up questions here yeah John. yeah i'm picturing a bunch of zubas wearing you know spaghetti strap tank top yeah, there was some spaghetti strap. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Trey's laughing in the back room. I can see him. So I'm picturing, and then you guys are all huddled in the fucking tanning bedroom, and this dude's jamming so, a needle, okay. and you're close enough that you can see it. So I'm the jam across the, gym. the room. It's squirted yeah. out of his arm. Like, so, what's happening so, right so now? So I'm I'm the GM of the gym. <laughs> oh, so because it's my gym, <laughs> and we have 11, 11 tanning beds. Eight of I them gotcha. were in a certain spot, but then there was three. And I uh, shut okay. all th those three down. So as I, I'm ready for my workout, I go back there. You guys ready? And I'm watching it because he's like, dude, he's going to spot shoot it in his bicep. I'm like, what? I'm like, you're <laughs> fucking nuts. And uh, after they took their Viagra, um, he sure as shit did. And I, I've never seen blood shoot like a heartbeat shoot across a room. Wow. That's impressive, John. Dude. <laughs> The fact that you're the manager of the gym and that sounds like somewhat normal activity is a little oh, bit staggering. I, dude, I, I have I have way way better stories, but I, they're <laughs> so inappropriate and they're so wrong. So, <laughs> I'm so wrong. Yeah, I was trying to think of like m most of the stories that we've shared on here. None of them are really like necessarily, or at least in my, they're not necessarily like funny. They're more like almost like in disbelief that somebody either said that or did that or you know um i remember I told this story a long time ago but uh, I'll, I'll bring it back and it wasn't really that funny it was actually though a really good business thing for me to understand is um when i had just got brand new carpet in my in my personal training studio and i had a subcontractor who i thought was a, he was paying me 200 dollars a month rent so for me as a 22 year old you know business owner the more people that paid rent the better and the guy was just fucking clueless. He just had a baby and he was getting ready for a bodybuilding show. And I come in and dude, I'm telling you, my carpet was so terrible when I first bought the gym and I bartered with the guy. This is another really good like business thing. Like I told him if he recarpeted my gym, which was 900 square feet, I would give him so many training sessions and I bartered with a lot. That's how I met Mark Evans back in the day. I bartered with Mark, Mark Evans. Shout like, out Mark Evans DM. Mark Evans DM. So it's like, I met look a lot up, of, look him yeah, up. I met a lot of people that way. Right. So anyway, so this guy comes in and he's got somebody pro tanning him and pro tan is the fake tanner. They put on you whenever you do a competition that makes you look dark, basically like almost black. And, and he basically brought one towel and pro tanned on top of my fucking brand new carpet. Oh, it's, oh, it's like blackface. It's uh, yeah, but not on your face. And so it's okay. on your whole body. And okay. so basically, right. cause the, cause the lights are so bright. So when I walk in, I see what's happening and I realize there's spray all over my brand new carpet. That's like a light gray. And this shit's like fucking brown. And so he's like, no, no, I got it, dude. I got it. And he picks the towel up. And the towel looks like it was like something you took and laid down and spray painted around. It's so bad. And I never thought at 22 years old, I would fire a guy so aggressively that it had a baby the same week. That I didn't care if he had somewhere to fucking feed his kid. I didn't care where the fuck he ever personal trained at again. I had worked so hard to make my gym look that nice. And within one week, this motherfucker fucked it up and I couldn't get it off the carpet. I was so mad. I almost like, 
I, I almost like literally like probably John Fosco, maybe like a six, not a 10, but right. I was like fucking ready to kill somebody for real. And, and it wasn't a funny thing, but what I learned from it was that, you know, one, just don't take anyone that can basically afford to pay rent. Cause you don't want just anyone in your gym. I was only looking at the numbers, not the quality of person and how many clients he had in the fact that like I had, he had access. It's just the way that he treated what I had worked so hard for, man, I, I, that was the first time I think I got really fucking mad and I did not care where his next dollar came from, like in a vicious manner. And I saw that for myself and I was like, damn, like you, you re like, I really didn't care how he fed his kid. And that, that, that was weird for me, Fosco. Well, that's that. Listen, I, I don't think any employer, and again, I'll sound heartless. Why should you care about where someone else, uh, how they feed their kid? Because at the end of the day, you would not have that thought if they did their job the right Correct. way. So I, it's not my fucking job to feed your kid. It's your job. So don't be an asshole. But I will come around and I, and, and, and I will give people what they want. I'll give you a quick story that's in, inappropriate. Inappropriate, yes. alert. inappropriate alert. Inappropriate alert. Uh, I cannot be sued. I cannot be held liable for anything. So basically when I was the general manager of this gym, um, I would Every hour on the hour after prime time, prime time would start like five o'clock. People would be in there after work. So we we had a microphone system in the gym. And from five to nine o'clock on the hour, I would make like I, I would have the staff make announcements about deals we're running on supplements, you know, on on drinks and bars, on tanning, you know, because we had the most people in the gym. So I, I wouldn't do it. I would tell the staff who had to do it. And typically it was the juice bar girls that had to do it. And there was this one juice bar girls, great, great person. Um, <laughs> I can see where this is going, please. <laughs> great person. She went, she went up to do the announcement and she turned the microphone on and she couldn't get it out of her mouth. She, she, she couldn't say it. She's like, I can't do it. I'm like, you have, I'm not going to use her name, but it's on the edge of my tongue. Uh, I'm like, you have to do it. You, I, 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 I look weak. If I give you a pass, when I say everyone has to do it, it's your turn. So I'm young, okay? I'm fucking 21 at this point. It's <laughs> amazing. She's an attractive girl. And she of just course. straight up turns around and looks at me. She says, if I don't have to do this announcement, I will suck your dick. And I, <laughs> I yes. said, what? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, you know what? I, I pretended like I was like upset because there was like two other coworkers around. And then I said, me and Keyword you. Keyword pretend. Keyword pretend. I go was ahead. like, I was like, me and you. I was like, come, come, come here. We got to go to tanning room no number seven. I got to talk to you about this. This is not. This is, and then it happened like that, dude. It was pretty awesome. That's it was pretty fucking awesome. See, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, time has passed, you know? So uh, I can talk about that. But yeah, that was pretty fucking awesome let's like like, John, like like a champ too we all know there's levels like a champ game. like a champ okay i'm you know talking what? like i walked in the room and i couldn't see her why because she was on her knees ready dude it's amazing what people do not to public speak <laughs> God here's bless. the other thing is what God, i had God bless america what i think about is the fact that you know I'm just guessing this is no, nothing against you personally, but a 21 year old John Fosco giving him the keys to a gym, like somebody, obviously your sales the numbers, numbers always got hit, baby. The numbers See, that's what hit. it does. It, it, it goes to show that you probably should have never had them, but I never should have had them. <laughs> never, never. I was, I was terrible. I was a fucking horrible manager, but we always hit our numbers, and I and and, I, and that's I all that in. matters. I had no boundaries. I was a fucking raging animal, um, but we had fun. So that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that story. Yeah, no problem. Dawn. No problem. I, I think that that will definitely make people uh, laugh. Listen, it was a nice thing she did. So, <laughs> all right, here's a great one. Yeah. At ML Memo eighteen. Okay. Have you have you ever tried a a juice cleanse before? And what's your thoughts? I think that's gay. Uh, <laughs> so I'm the wrong guy to ask about that gay shit. So I'm not fucking gonna answer that gay question. So. I'll be let. I'll be more politically correct. I think that's a. I just don't believe in those a whole bunch. <laughs> I think yeah. that they're 
terrible. And I, I just think that the juice cleanse, the grapefruit cleanse, the fucking eat soup for a week cleanse. Like, I, I mean, honestly, you know, I'm not really a guy that goes to research a whole bunch, but I'm more of an application based person, but there is some studies on even like longer fasting, you know, just like a 24 hour fast the you know, regenerate cells, do whatever. Like I'd, I'd be more apt to say like, look at something like that based with even a regular diet that that would give you a better result than a juice cleanse. I just think that shit's like so short term and Hollywood. I just never really understood the whole thing around the juice cleanse. Yeah. I, there's I all these cleanses and this and that I, I, for what, for what just fucking stick to a diet. Don't be just a eat pig. Good. Yeah. Stop yeah. fucking eating cake. You, you slob. <laughs> and then you wouldn't have to fucking do all this shit. At uh at CZ Fitness MN wants to know oh, CZ Fit. Now we got another fucking see John. Here's ball. the thing: is we got tons of fitness people, so you got to be nice, dude. Come on. Uh, what is the um? Uh, can you just speak on how you either scaled up or scaled down business during the pandemic? Yeah, so I think everyone is in a different situation based on the in- <laughs> industries we're in. So put it like this. Uh, when you were in other recessions, when people were in other recessions, th- they were either over leveraged, under leveraged. And I believe, sure, when consumers don't have, a, have as much money, you're going to take a hit, but it was way more manageable. A large part of this incoming recession, and I, I, I believe the pain is, is, is coming, um, was caused by I don't want to call it the rule of law, but it kind of was the rule of law. You know, you're quarantined, you're shut down. So business just has to take it in in the ass because so many businesses, I mean, uh, uh, here, hotels, right? I mean, fucking, I I really do feel bad for the hotels because um, imagine how much money they're losing and and, and all all these other industries. But uh, at, at the end of the day, if you are in a business that, uh, a situation like this could just radically shut down. I think it, you have to manage yourself in a way where you're always you're always in a position where you have higher cash reserves. Now, if you are an online purveyor of anything, you know, short of you know the power grid getting shut down, well, then everyone's fucked, and there's no banking, there's no anything outside of that. Like you're, you're <clears throat> you don't necessarily need to have these these cash reserves on hand. So here's how you scale up and scale down. And and I'm an asshole, but here's the truth: people, right? When you don't need people, you have to let them go. When you let them go, that opens up fucking cash flow, bro. So people have to get furloughed they have to get laid off that's how you would scale down um but here's the thing you can scale up too because when everyone's hurting the last thing they're doing is investing in new products investing in new systems getting going on the offensive so i believe if you're in a position to go on the offensive then you should because no one can convince me we're not going to have a fully functional, even though it will be different, economy in the future. So I believe on scaling up if you have the financial ability to do so because then you're using the situation where literally your competitor's eyes are closed. No one's thinking, let me go on the offensive. Let me spend more money. So that that to me would be how you scale up. And scaling down, it, you got you got to release people. I think understanding this is possible will always now be in everyone's brain for the rest of the duration. Understanding that, you know, um, if we have a physical location like a CBD social, that as soon as the cruise ships don't show up, no one's traveling, people can't be out, they can't walk in the door. That a business like that should have more cash reserves because of that fact, right, Johnny? And then maybe if it was only online, then obviously it wouldn't be as affected as much. So it's like, that's not something that, I mean, maybe we would have kind of understood in the back of our head, but now we're always going to think that. Does that make sense? Right? It, yeah. It, I show, think it, it shows I think you totally some idea. Sense, it shows like, you some, uh, it gives you some, I just think like everything was going so well everywhere. Markets at fucking all time highs. Every, You know what I'm saying? Like, And I remember this kind of a little bit before 2008. It's like somebody could throw a dart at a fucking stock and they could still make money. Like it, it just makes you kind of 
check on overextending yourself, maybe not hang, you know, not maybe not hanging yourselves out the dry as much. And just to think like, whoa, this just happened. And this will kind of hang on for a lot of a, a while. So people operate maybe just a little bit smarter. I don't know. I just think that's what it yeah. does. Yeah. I mean, I always think <laughs> like that though. I always I always believe in having like a fucking uh Jesus Christ. Sorry, my phone. Um I, I always <laughs> believe in having uh, a cash position to where you're ready for shit to hit the fan. So sure. I've said this before. It, uh, listen, if you go out of business during this time, is it unfortunate? Yeah. Did you deserve it? Yeah. You deserve what happens to you. I don't care if someone's like, well, do airlines deserve it? What, uh, uh, dude, business is not about fair. Like if it happens to you, you deserved it. You could have done something to be in a different position and you didn't because you didn't think bad things would happen. Business is unfair. I, I, I just think if you really want to be in this game for the long haul, you have to think like that. And part of thinking like that is always having, uh, let's say as an owner of a business, always having fucking a cash position. What does your cash position mean? Your cash position means that you can provide a backbone for your business. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, so like I, I I'm, always ready for this stuff at least in my mind but scaling up and scaling down i mean to me the first thing is is is, is employees is people you know? thinking yeah. about that too john i was watching a guy talking about very similar thing that you just said and he's like look he's like if certain certain uh industries were so overextended that they couldn't make it 30 days they shouldn't make it correct and, and he's like he in what he said was and it's true he's like you know, we're not going to go down and like, for instance, if old school gym goes out of business because we can't handle this, they're not coming to save me. No, it's it just not. It, it, and it doesn't matter how good my service was or how, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not. So it's business. It, the deck gets reshuffled. Yeah. And so that right there is where stuff's a little bit off right now because of that. And, and I, I, I agree with you. I mean, that's where it gets like, I don't know if it's political. I don't know if it's just the business 101. I don't really know what vein it falls in. I, th but. I think it falls in this vein. Mm. I think it falls in the vein of why shouldn't I be able to run a hardware store in my town, provide a decent living for my family, and, 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 and why should I have to deal with this? Well, you chose to open the hardware store. You yep. chose to be a participant and a boss in your business in the free market. The free market has no rules. It has no Literally. rules. Here's what you need to do if, if you want to have an armory for a war, and this is a war. You need to have cash. You need to have access to capital. However you do that, and you need to know that. And if you are a business owner, but to you being a business owner is just providing for your family, that's great. That, that's a thought. That's not reality. Reality <laughs> is the, mar the, 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 the free market is shutting you down. So nobody wants to hear it's not fair. Well, everyone can say that. And if we all got <laughs> together as business owners and said, it's not fair, what would change? We would just go out of business faster. Yeah, that that's that's just the reality. You're right, Johnny. Hundred percent. No one's coming to save you. No, <laughs> but no. somebody's coming to save certain people. <laughs> that's what's happening. Yeah. All right. Uh, at D Willie forty five wants to know some tips on a uh, growing a company in a reset industry. Make yourself stand out or do what works. Make yourself stand out or do what works. I don't know. I think you got to do both, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, in a, in a reset economy, I think exactly what we're talking about. Look at the sector or the vertical of, of business that has the most businesses going out of business and yep. look at why they're going out of business. There, there's going to be a common theme. And so like, uh, like, a strong vertical in business is never going to go away. It may adapt or change. And I would zero in on what's going on in this area. Oh, th 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 this is happening. Okay, here's how we can take it. Because when you have so many companies losing uh, their business, there's a large amount of customers who are now saying, who's going to get my money for this service or product? You know, so you got to step in and figure out why they went out of business and go into their business if you so choose 
with a strategy that's much, much different than theirs. And, and honestly, um, make it technologically driven, make it low overhead driven. Let's think about, let's think about the big company. I think the big companies here are going to come out as winners because as opposed to being on fifth Avenue in New York with an office of fucking 800 people and having yeah. an office in Seattle and LA, now you literally can justify like having, you know, an office for 50 people, right? Which is going to save you fucking millions oh. and millions a year and having people work on, you know, teleconferencing lines. You know what I'm saying? That That is that is massive. But then on the flip side, what's that going to do to, you know, people who are own office space and real and estate, commercial, yeah. commercial real estate <clears throat> and, and non- hot spots so you know we just gotta we just gotta think about what our company is going to do come especially public companies they're always trying to grow profits if yep. they can justify it now that people can work from home and everyone would be like yep that's safer they're going to do it they're going to do it's it it's going to create more more profit and think about it they just had a test run the whole world did and it seems like it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that's going to happen. So it, even when I thought about, um, all right, people are buying a gym membership, right? They're paying <clears throat> whatever lifetime or, you know, like the MUSC, like some of these overpriced ones, like old school is like 30 bucks and so no one's really tripping on that. But like some of these ones are pretty heavy and, you know, people are going to evaluate one, whether they're going to go out that much Two, uh, they're going to invest in home equipment just in case something like this happens again. They don't ever want to be like without the ability to train. Like that is going to change that entire thought process of the gym, I think completely. And yeah. so I have to figure out as a fitness guy, how do I, or a supplement se seller, how do we put ourselves in that kind of market? We're not selling within retailers, which was huge for max effort. Cause yeah, if they yeah. couldn't go to the gym and they couldn't go to GNC, how the fuck are they going to buy the product? By the way, yeah. it'd be sitting there selling to no one it, it, taking up space, taking up cash flow, right? hundred yeah. percent. Instead we, you know, as manufacturing is a little slower, but as soon as product hit, the need was there. Cause guess what? The demand of workout time just went up because people have all the time. The ones that are still motivated, the just access of, you know, information for home workouts obviously was good for my online business personally. And it's like, you have to think like, yo, 20 years ago, it was, I'm taking $20 to teach somebody how to do bicep curls. Well, this thing has moved so many different directions since then. And right now it just moved a serious direction. And if you're online based and you've got the platforms already built out or you're not, you know, pushing to move it, you, you could potentially get left behind for the yeah. next fucking stratosphere of what this means, bro. I, I would, I would highly recommend <clears throat> when it comes to like a space, if people are trying to think about things to put their mind on hygiene and yep. cleaning, I think, I think there's going to be very, there's going to be widgets. There's going to be little products that people are going to now put into their budget for hygiene and cleaning and and it's going to to our to our initial brain it's going to sound like overkill but then this this new normal that we're going into it's not it's not overkill you literally have to disinfect your screen every time you deal with a customer you know yeah. what i'm saying so just think about think about that with your cell phone think about that with you think about that with anything you touch often think about that with money money yeah. right I mean, I, there are things. It's a new normal that's going to be real, bro. It is yeah, real. And, and and that hygiene sector is, is going to, I think, become a monster. Yeah. The first, the first, you know, I usually buy a lot of stuff and kind of hold on to it. But the first stocks I sold was the real estate REITs I owned as soon as this happened. Because I thought, yeah. everyone's working at home. Who the fuck? How are these big companies going to keep paying for these massive buildings? They're just, it's just not going to be. Well, and the small happen. business is paying the rent. You Correct. know, a lot of, lot, you know, a lot of REITs, you know, own, you know, small business. Yeah. So, yeah. But like I own some of the ones that were like the, um, sh like the outlet malls and shit like that. Like a lot of those retailers are going to be struggling They're to fucked. keep paying. They're yeah. fucked. <laughs> exactly. Fuck. Um, all right. Here at JR276 wants to know, how would you deal with being laid off during this time? Which is real for a lot of people, Johnny. Um, I, I, I think the only way to deal with being laid off in this time is a couple of things. One, you must maintain positivity. Like 
you must. So I think uh, this time is trying enough when it comes to mental health. Being laid off, I can only imagine how tough that would be. You have you have to stay positive and you don't mourn. Don't mourn. Immediately go into a solution. Immediately yep. go in your ro into your Rolodex. Immediately go into past jobs. You do not have time to share uh, your despair with people. And people, frankly, don't care. So what I would do is I would immediately go into solution mode and keep a positive attitude. Because what happens is when people get negative, they don't want to talk about solutions. They want to keep talking about the problem. And that, my friends, is cancer. And that will keep you exactly where the fuck you're at. So I know it's hard, but these are things you have to do. You have to do them. I think that's really great advice. I, first thing I thought was you got to go Marshawn Lynch. You got to go beast mode. You got to go all about that action boss. You can't be sitting around just what Johnny said. You got to go. How do I? Cause then really is the competition, right? John, just what you said earlier, you are not working right now. Now you're about to compete against how many million people? Dude. Multiple. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable amount. So now the competition just got fucking real. So the guy who's sitting there mourning, drinking, upset, you know, blasting Facebook constantly about how pissed he is about his employer. That's not the guy. That's the guy that if I'm laid off and I'm training and I'm studying and I'm, I'm Rolodex and I'm, I'm, you know, refining my craft, I'm figuring out how that I'm going to beat that dude every day of the week. It's just the fucking truth, right? So everybody is everybody. So you got to understand like what side of that one are you on? And then think about when you're in a competitive environment, what's the fucking separator? It's the positive attitude. It's the guy that's been pushing to make himself better. It's look, no one wants to have no work. I grew up with, you know, my dad being on strike with the coal mine multiple times. That shit's fucking tough. Or, you know, when they had a coal, uh, I think it was in like the eighties, there was a time where they were laid off is like, that shit ain't cool, bro. You can barely pay your bills if at all. I get it. But what I'm saying is like, you should be a beast in the fucking paint right then. So when you get an opportunity, they got to say, no, 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 it's that guy. I don't even give a fuck about the other thousand motherfuckers that have put him for this job. It's fucking that guy. Because I'm going to yeah. tell you what, if my family was in that position, Motherfucker, when I'm going in to get that job, I'm coming out with it because I got to survive. That that's the way you got to be feeling in my mind. And and no, nothing is out of bounds. So take your ego and fucking yeah. throw that bitch in it. Nothing is out of bounds. Let me let me tell you real quick about this this fucking guy. Uh, this there's there's a guy who's homeless here. Uh, he he his name is Keith, and he's always uh smiling, and he always remembers your name, and he will not ask for money he will always come up and he did this the other day he will say what can i do to earn money i was like i got six bucks on me man he's like let me clean that fucking wood let me shine that wood up for you done done you know what I'm saying? my point is this guy is fucking the right homeless. ass he's got he's he's got a fucking you know he's he's you know he may not be all all there but he understands that like let me do something to earn it and you can apply that obviously on a macro scale on a bigger yeah. scale but that's the attitude so stop thinking that you're better than a job i hate when i hear people like yeah but I, i'm not gonna go and get a job at like home depot why why are you above it well because yeah. right now you're you're broke you don't got a job. That's the problem. That's the fucking problem. You know? Yeah, I agree. Um, at hokey nation 13 wants to know if you could set up a huge banner anywhere, what like bay I'm, I'm assuming like a Times square or something like, what would it, what would you, what would it say? What would be, what would you pick to put on it, John? Uh, from like a personal standpoint, I would say like, maybe it's like something, you would want to get out that everyone needs to know that, that when I think of questions like this, I think it's like something that you found out that has allowed you to be John Fosco that you think yeah. the world needs to know. I mean, I, it, I'd probably split it, right? Mm -hmm. it, would, it would probably be one, one, please take this seriously. No one gives a fuck. So you, no one gives a fuck. No one cares about you. Okay. So just stop it. 
No one cares about you. And two, you can't give a fuck what anyone thinks. And these pe people have heard these things a million times. But for some reason, people battle them. No one gives a fuck. And don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. And if you could say, yeah, bro, as opposed to fucking putting that as a quote on your Instagram. No, 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 no. Try to live it. If you try to live it, uh, dude, the impact is fucking ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. But try, try to live it as opposed to share it out and tag your friends. Try to live it. Some people have a hard time understanding. Well, most people, I would say, John, because I don't think a lot of people can live like that, right? That they think like, yeah, it's easy to say, oh. but it's like. But it's like if you practice it mm. for a while and you it, it might hurt a little bit and then it starts that you get like calloused over time, then it really just bounces off of you. You really just don't give a fuck. But it's like, was there a process to getting to that point for you that no. you could share with? Or is it just like, all right, now I am just not going to internalize at that. Look at people's intentions, right? So if we're, if we're going to talk in the realm of career work business. Sure. Who the fuck is lining up to help you? <laughs> yes. Who's doing it? But time out. If you could present a benefit to somebody, are they lining up to, to try to work with you? And Yes. Okay, so self-interest rules the world. I, I'm not going to cry about it. That's what it is. Reality. Find me, find me someone who's going to come work for you indefinitely for free. No, they want money. They want opportunity. Why? Why? Because they don't have a better option. They want something. And it's about themselves. So we can, we can spin that however we want. It, it, Self-interest rules. It always will. It always has. If you view the world through this fucking bullshit lens of no people really care about each other, okay, find me someone <laughs> who fucking wrote a check to uh, someone for ten thousand dollars on a Wednesday just because. Uh, you know that? No, no, people don't do that. You got to go get it yourself. So it's these, it's these thoughts and this reliance on other people. Fuck other people. Like fuck them, but 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 when I say that, don't don't take it the wrong way because that doesn't mean you disrespect other people. That just means like anything that you have to get done, you rely on you. Yeah. And, and if someone comes along and they're fucking Prince Charming and they fucking <laughs> help it, that okay, <laughs> Prince great, Charming. great. But dude, don't bank on it. You didn't have somebody ride in on a white horse and grab you up, John? No, no. Let's tell everybody. <laughs> Let's tell everybody about our, our our business relationship. It says Corey owns this percent, John owns this percent. Yeah. I get this money, you get that money. That's why we're doing it. Yeah, that's the uh, goal of the business, right? Right. <laughs> and right. we both we both want to make sure we make our interest. That's correct. what it is. <laughs> co co correct. And 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 great if we get along. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. But 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 that right there is why we're doing it. Yeah, that's true. That people don't like to hear that though. Isn't that funny? Well, those are the people who are always going to be confused. Well, oh, he's so cutthroat. They're so cutthroat. Dude, dude, accept what is, accept the real world. No one fucking cares about you. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Um, what my what my banner would say is that I think um there's a lot of people that never get to really realize maybe it's not even their ultimate perfect fucking dream. I know most people don't get to realize that, but just even that never really give it a real shot to be and do what they actually like to do. Meaning like most people will go through and just, you know, are kind of their jobs. Okay. Or their path of life. Those of maybe that's what they got their degree in. So they just went ahead. And even though they don't really like it a whole bunch, they still went into that, you know, same kind of thing because it was a quality job or whatever. I, I just never, um, was willing to like be okay with that. And I was willing to go into a profession that I didn't know anybody that was successful in and, um, and really just give it hell. And hopefully it worked out. And obviously I put a lot of action around and belief in that, but it's like, I was, I didn't want to have regret as an old man that I just never really gave it hell. So I don't know what the quote would be, but it would be something based around like you, you really need to roll the dice a couple times to be, to get your ultimate 
happiness, to be truly fulfilled with what you really were here supposed to do. Because if not, you're always just going to wonder. And I just never wanted to be the person that wondered, well, what happens if I would have moved to the city and tried to be a personal trainer? Instead, I stayed here and did X job or whatever for 30 years. And maybe I was still able to provide for my family and still, I don't say I wasn't happy, but I'd still have that piece of, you know, in the back of my head thinking, I just, uh, to me that, that would be so heavy that I don't care what age you're at. Um, you know, I think you gotta, you gotta test it a little bit, even if it's on the side, like you gotta start to see like, is my true, my actual like true ability just come out naturally. If I was doing something I love to do, you know, each day and yeah, it has shit around it. That's still tough and tasks and whatever. But at the end of the day, like, I don't really try um, to do some of the things like they, they come out because it's what I was really supposed to do. So that's why it seems so natural. That's why it's, um, I'm not fucking faking it. I've told John this before. Like I can't fake that I'm this serious about the gym. Like it's just who I am and I can't not produce content around it. Cause it's, I'm just capturing what I do. Like, um, it's not something I have to force if that makes sense. And I, I feel like everyone has that for them, they just need to uncover it and they might not be able to do it for a living. I don't know, but I just think you need to try to at least experience it. And I don't know that everyone really gives themselves a chance at that. I, I, I agree a hundred percent. I think, you know, both things connect because I think it connects exactly kind of to one of the things I was saying is like, don't, you can't give a fuck what other people say. So I think a lot of people know what lights them up inside, but they're not, they're, 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 yeah. they're not courageous enough to go after it because they don't want to hear what their parents have to say or their friends have to they don't want they don't want to hear that because the expectation was put on them to be you know in this place you know yeah. so it's a combination of i think a lot of people know what really makes them happy but they're not they're not fucking courageous enough to go after it when and, it doesn't mean it's going to be full time tomorrow johnny you know what i mean like that that takes time it, it you, if you know it you can you can like mess around with it and see if it can be you know yeah. Yeah. I mean, people need to stop caring about, uh, the, 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 the result, like the result is going to be the result. But if you just do something and you give it all you have, that's something to be proud of. Even if the result isn't this big enterprise that makes money, like it's something to be proud of to be like, I wanted to do that. I did it. Yeah. And, and if the results aren't, aren't there in terms of monetary or whatever it may be, who gives a fuck? Like who? It's give fulfilling, a dude. See, that's where people are missing. It is fulfilling Correct. to be able to Correct. do things like that. Correct. That you know you were meant to do. And look, my essential original job in this industry, most people think it's a hobby. They just do. They think lifting weights is a hobby because it is for most people, but it's not for me. And that's what I was trying to tell people around me when I was young. I was like, yeah, I know, like this is what a lot of us have done and what our parents did, or you know, the guys we worked with, they lift weights, they bench 300 pounds. Motherfucker, this is gonna be my job. And that's what I try to tell people. Like when they come at me for certain things, I'm like, this is my profession. Like, I'm not your friend that sits beside you in the fucking cubicle that had a good five by five program. That's not me. I'm the motherfucker that's done it for 20 years. This is my job. And so, like when I would tell people like I was in pursuit of that. They didn't know anybody that did it. They didn't know it was possible. They, but it didn't, that didn't. That's why you didn't. can't listen to them. Exactly. And it didn't change what I thought was possible right? because I was so headstrong. So I think really like at the end of the day, knowing I gave it a shot, same as the concept of, of John, when I got the opportunity for MP, I was doing well at that time in the first version of what my fitness kind of, or business was. And I had the same exact thought. I thought to myself, all right. I've really looked up to a guy like Bill Phillips. I would like to, you know, do something similar, have my own supplement company, and I'm doing well right now, way better than probably I even anticipated to be honest, like from a standpoint of personal training what I thought it could grow to in a in the town I was in, and I'm like, but I know this opportunity is here. If I don't go after it, like and roll the dice and think, could I have my own product on the shelf at GNC? Could I really, you know, transition into that next level? I would have had the same feeling. So I think there's points of even within your business where you have to check yourself like this if that's really what you want, even though you're doing already well in it, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
So, I agree. So. All right. Uh, let's get one more. All right. Here, we'll end with this one. <laughs> uh, there's something about you. All right. Here he goes. Uh, I can't see his name, but does John Fosco keep his hat and sunglasses on when he gets down with the ladies? <laughs> If, if if he hasn't if he hasn't noticed, I haven't had my sunglasses on in about a year. <laughs> well, you lost them originally, right? You have them back now. I bought an I bought another pair. So, yeah, but I John, what? Them. Okay, I'm going to pose a scenario to make this question yeah, fun. Yeah, absolutely. Very similar to the girl, maybe in the, um, you know, in the gym that uh, performed a service on you. Hmm. What if there was a fan of the show that said, yeah. "I want John Fosco, but the only way," and she's bad. The only way is hat and sunglasses. That's fine. That's all I want, John. No, that's, that's not what I want, but that's what they want. <laughs> Don't yeah, put that fine. on Instagram. No, no, they'll get it. They'll get it. Yeah, okay. So that's they'll no problem. It. That's no problem. Look, he's no, smiling. No, no. He's in. No, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Okay, perfect. Oh, what an, another good Q and A, Johnny. Another good yeah. Q and A. You got anything? Friday uh, Q and A's. Friday Q and A's. There, I, I honestly, I really look forward to the Friday Q and A's. And here's what I've liked about the last few weeks: we've been pretty deep on Wednesday uh, slash Thursday, right? And then it, this is, you know, a little bit off the cuff and a little lighter. And I've been mixing in some questions that are fun, and I, I really like that kind of back and forth. That's been pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I think right now. Uh, as a time period kind of breeds some some deep thinking you know what i'm saying for, for, sure. for, for everybody so i i think um going there in general sometimes people may have a hard time connecting with but now it's it, it's relevant because a lot of people are are kind of soul searching uh but yeah the, the q the q a's are 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 fun i mean they're, they're fun and you know there's a lot of jokers out there but there's some good questions yeah, no, no question. So you'll be at John Fosco Dinosaur here soon, I'm guessing. Right? No, man. No, You're gonna no. call it's gonna be at, I want to know if that hey, guy's an archaeologist, dude. John, are you aware of the dinosaur that's called the Clitosaurus? Have you ever heard of that one? Listen, I know if <laughs> one, I know if a woman takes a lot of steroids like testosterone, <laughs> like her clit gets like <laughs> I'm serious. It gets like no, I'm aware. I'm like serious. a penis. It's like a penis. It's like a penis. <laughs> and that would be probably woman. its own dinosaur. Yeah, dude. I mean, I don't know if it's a dinosaur, but it's like a fucking hanging fucking like it looks like a bat hanging up upside down. Mm -hmm. uh, great place to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Johnny Fosco. G. Can the podcast be stopped? The podcast, the podcast can't be stopped.